Well hello again everybody, welcome back and just concluding my long Easter weekend in the woodshed I uh, always get a lot of questions about the pinning tray so I thought I'd show you a couple of ways of making them uh, two you've probably seen in my videos the plastic one and the wooden one I use so plastic ones not quite as easy as wood or you can't use as many variations to do it I'll show you a couple of different ways of doing them and um, basically we start off just with wooden chopping boards my ones come from Tesco's, they're cheap I think these are about three or four quid and wooden ones like this one I think about five six quid at the most but with this we can get four out of there you can get four smaller ones this size out of one of these or two large ones I'm sure many of you have seen the one John at Apache Lock Sport uses that's one of these just cut across there so it's got the handle on it as well left on there so I'm not going to do a plastic one today but the same methods can be used on the wooden one so we'll cut this up I'll probably make four out of this and I'll show you a couple of ways of doing it. First one, the one I tend to use, is using the router with a round over bit. And if we can see that. And that's how we get the grooves all rounded off like so. You can do the same sort of thing with a Dremel. I haven't got the parts for this, but you can get a collar that sits on there to use it as a router. and different shape bits so you could do it with a Dremel the same way as with the router or we can use a hand chisel and some drill bits so we can use a drill bit to let's just grab this to do the rounded off corners here yeah, drill bit either end score down and then we can take the rest out with a chisel but we'll have a go, I'll cut this up, get them marked up and then we'll have a go at a couple of different methods and see how we get on. Right, so we have the chopping board cut up, as you can see into four pieces. Uh, now this is a slightly different size to this one. So this was made out of a smaller board which was in two pieces. So that was just cut in half, whereas this is a larger board, a fraction smaller, but not enough to worry about. So the next thing we're going to do is, well, you need to decide on the layout, how you actually want your pinning board or your pinning tray. Uh, I'm probably going to do two different options here. The one with the router I'll do long channels like this uh, and the one that we cut out by hand I'm probably going to do smaller individual ones because that way we can remove more material with the drill and less chiselling so it'll be a little bit easier uh, I mean I quite like them like this we've just got a little bit at the top there for putting the barrels in plenty of room for the pins clips and everything go on the side uh, so it works alright for me but you can lay them out however you like so I'm going to get a couple of these laid out marked up and then we'll carry on right so here we are we've got two marked up they're loosely based on the original one so we have one here we're going to do with the router as you can see we've got marked up long one at the top, seven long ones here and then nice big space at the side and then the one we're going to do by hand is a long one at the top again, same down there but we've got three chambers at the side here so a longer one at the top for springs and then key pin, driver pin and what we'll do first is we're going to drill holes now we're going to use a 10mm drill bit and just a normal high speed steel one because that should give us effectively a little bit a rounded end 
like on these and that little bit of depth so what I've marked on here is all the points are the center of the drill hole so what we need to do is just go along all these and mark them to guide the drill like so this is an automatic center punch but you can use any center punch a nail with a hammer but this will just guide the drill so we mark out all of those and then we'll get onto the drill so I'll get these marked out get the drill set up and we'll carry on right so here we are with the first one all marked up as you can see I've put extra divots along here along here also we have to use the chisel a little bit less if we're close enough let's zoom in a little bit so we have the drill press set to just go into the surface so we're not too deep uh, if you haven't got a drill press what you can do if we zoom out this isn't exactly right if I can get this in block of wood the right size and you can set the depth so that every time you plunge a hand drill I'll get my hand out of the way you've got that as a stop see that will spin on there so that is an alternative if you haven't got the drill press so we'll get a couple of these done hopefully I'm not in the way so this is a little bit loud uh, I'll get a couple of these show you what it looks like and then I'll carry on doing the rest <laughs> see that's what we end up with so it leaves us only a very small amount of material to chisel away but I'll get the rest of these drilled out and then we'll carry on right so here we are as we can see all drilled out and also removed a lot of material from that area just with the drill because it's depth stopped so We'll just grab an old bit of sandpaper, we'll give that a quick, just to get all the snotty bits off the edges, but hopefully we can actually see the layout now, we've got the small, small one, larger one here, likewise. So what we need to do next is with a steel rule, or any sort of rule, you can use a pencil, I prefer to use a marking knife is we need to join up the edges of these holes the reason I prefer a knife is it gives us a little divot to actually put the chisel into so we'll just get a couple of these done like so if we can see, I'm not sure if it's going to show up too well on camera, I've just done these two here, we can just see we've got that little line where we can actually get the chisel into and then that means we can set the chisel into that little knife line and little scoop that way little scoop that way 
it is far better as long as you've got a nice sharp chisel. If I just get these two done. These chopping boards are normally made out of beach or something similar which is reasonably hard wood but not too hard for hand working with a chisel like this but right that's just roughly done I need a little bit more tidying up but we show you those so hopefully we can see what they turn into so I shall have a go at a load more of these, get these done and see how we get on with finishing it. Right, so I've spent about 15-20 minutes roughing it out. Uh, still needs a lot of tidying up but you can see the idea now. We can still see some of where the drill holes are because they're not deep enough quite yet. But we're getting the idea. So I'll get a bit more done and come back to you. Alright, we've done a bit more work on this one as we can see. Get in frame, it's starting to get there. Uh, I mean, if we look right at the bottom there, I hope that focuses. Just a little bit of work. This bottom one here, I've got nearly finished off, and we've got most of that part cleaned off at the bottom. So I'll have a go at finishing this later, but we'll get onto the router one for the starters. But effectively, I mean, so far we're into this for about one pound fifty or a couple of dollars, and just over an hour. If you just went straight through it all, so and it's a perfectly usable pinning tray. But we'll now get on to this one here and have a go with the router. So exactly the same piece of wood, same sort of layout, just we're going to have the long slots rather than the short ones because it's easier to do with the router. Uh, less likely to have problems. So give me a minute and I'll get this set up and we'll have a go. Right, so we're set up to do the router version of this. Uh, there's a couple of ways we can do this. As we can see we've got it all marked up still with the pencil marks. One way is to clamp a straight edge and then we can run our router along there measure the distance from the centre of the centre of the router bit to the edge of the base and measure that distance back and then we can just run our router along that but with this one I do have a an adjustable fence so we can set this to the right distance in so what I'll do, we clamp it in here, like so, good and firm, move it back a fraction, just need to make sure we've got enough clearance because the there we go. The depth of the fence here is deeper than the piece of wood we're using. And I've got some extra light here. So I can actually see in here. And effectively we start at one end where our mark is, plunge it in, work our way along and stop when we get to the other end. So we'll get this first one done and have a quick look. Let's get the lead round. 
So, sorry for the noise again. And then, there we go, as we can see we've got a nice groove all the way through, a little bit scrappy on the edges, but a little touch of sandpaper, like so. There we go, so we've got all cleaned off on the edges, nice rounded for pulling bits and pieces out. So I shall get on and do the rest of these off camera and be back in a minute. Right, so we've got all that done. Uh, I made a couple of little boobs, but still all workable. A uh, little bit of burning because my router bit isn't the sharpest. Uh, we need to clean this up but we've also got the big lump in the middle there. So what I've done is put a straight cutting bit in the router. I've set the depth to exactly the same as we had there. So we'll take that out and start cleaning up. Right, so here we are with the other part hollowed out. Uh, I mean, it's perfectly usable as it is. Uh, all quite nicely done. I've given it a very quick rough sand over just to get all the burrs off the edges. You could spend some time if you do get burn marks uh, sanding those out, they will come out. But what I like to use is my special little mixture I have here which is crushed up walnut shells soaked in boiling water and we can just run along on the insides done with a better brush but Get this first one done. And on something like this, especially these boards, it does work quite nicely because it tends to soak into the wood that you've machined rather than the surface because the surface has already been treated with a finish but I just find it gives a nice contrast especially when you put the pins in so there we go you can see the difference then it needs a little bit more on it, but gives those nice dark stripes. Uh, but then once that's dried off, it's all ready for a final light sanding in there. Just because the stain tends to lift the grain a bit. And then with a finish of your choice, varnish, wax, whatever. But like I say, that can be done with a Dremel. Uh, this one's not perfect, but I was flapping around trying to film at the same time. So there's a couple of little mistakes in there, but it's still perfectly usable. And yet again, about £1.50, a couple of dollars, 
worth of wood and about half an hour for that so hope you found that useful if any of you feel inspired to make your own pinning trays send me a picture email address is on the page on my channel be interesting to see I hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching see you again soon bye